It's presently 401, October 12, 2001. Uh, call, to, um, call to order the meeting of the Hanson Board of Health. Uh, we'll go to roll call. Arlene Diaz? Yes. Yes. Kevin Perkins? Yes, I'm here. And I'm here also, Dennis O'Connell. Um, first order of business will be to approve the minutes of September 14th, if everyone's read them. Yep, I'll, I'll make a motion, a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second that motion, Dennis. This is Kevin. Thank you. And we'll go to roll call, Ali. Yes. And Kevin? Yes. And I'm a yes also. Uh, next up, we'll set a meeting date for next month, if Teresa has a preference. Um, well, November 9th is four weeks. So if you want to do four weeks or if you want to do um, five weeks, it would be the 16th. So whatever works best for you guys. The ninth work for everybody? Yes. Yeah. I'm good. Fine by me. Okay, so the ninth. Okay. Ooh. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have a well permit for 84 Reed Street. If everyone's seen the documentation, do we have someone here uh, representing them? Or? I, somebody was going to call in, but I'm not sure. I don't believe I see him there, but. I'm here. Sorry. Can oh, you there you are. I'm yep. here. Dennis? Okay. Yes. Before he uh, makes a presentation. The one thing I did notice on the document was that it says Reed Road in like five places. I would ask that they correct that to Reed Street. Mm hmm. Did you hear that? I heard it. Sure. I didn't. I don't. I don't. I'm gonna be. <laughs> uh, let me see if I can find the document. I my, my land engineer whoever did it's not here, so I just assume he put the wrong thing in there. Yeah, it's on the house, it's on the lot next door, it's on the lot across the street. There's about five different places where it says Reed Road and not Reed Street. Got it. And just to make sure there's no confusion later on, it really should yep. all say Reed Street. That was my only. Anyone else have any issues with um, the application or the location or? Anything? Uh, look, looks okay to me, Dennis. I, I, I agree with Eileen. I, I looked at that too. Um, so I'll, I'll uh, make a motion to approve for the well permit um, pending a final as built of the well once it's installed and pending updated um, corrections on the application just in the plans to show Reed Street and correct it from saying Reed Road. Do I hear a second? That. And we'll go to roll call, Arlene. Yes. Kevin. Yes. I'm a yes also. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have the summer camp at Camp Kiwani. Miss um, Hickey, are you here? Hello? Not there. Hello. I do see them on here, Dennis. They just look like they're muted. Uh, yeah, she is. Miss Hickey, you want to unmute yourself? Oh, no, I don't see her. Yeah, see, I can't see any of that. I just, I'm on the phone, so. She, she was here, and uh, now she's gone. Oh. Did we come back to it later? See if she yes, fell I, off know. and we'll call that? Yeah, okay. Um, next up, uh, the contact tracer position. Um, did you, if everyone's seen the posting for it and the qualifications and such. Any discussion on that? Yeah, is this a new position we're creating? No, it's the one we've been trying to fill. Well, instead of a public health nurse. 
It would be a contact oh. tracer, just a temporary position. Okay. And it would be yeah. not an employee, it would be a contract because they're not entitled to benefits or anything. Right. I, I, I saw the, the whole um, job description, but I thought this is not a job that we've had funding for, a line that we've had funding for in the past. We, we so. still have the, um, remember when we had Norwell VNA and we had the money yeah, for that? Yeah. That yeah. line is still in the budget. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah. that was my thought that perhaps we could use that money to do, to fill this position. Um, again, I don't know how how much how long we'll need the person, but CTC is closing down the end of the year, so so we have to have something in place by then. They're still covering right. us for right now until we can get someone. Yes. Okay. Yep. So this will ensure that um, all of the contact tracing is done. Um, and we're definitely going to need somebody past December. Yeah. Sadly, oh. yes. Yeah, we will. Okay. Yeah, yeah that so. was my question. On where was this coming from? So if that anyone knows question. anybody. <laughs> when, when we, we, we have to approve it first and then we can uh, post it? Correct. Okay. I'm sorry, Kevin. Uh, I was going to say, so I, I just had two questions. I think I brought one up last time we discussed this. So one is if they're going to be a subcontractor for the town and not an employee of the town. Um, I, I feel that they should have some sort of liability policy. Yeah, we, we'd have to talk to the town administrator about that because yes, they would. They'd have to have some type of coverage. I don't know what if, if the town would do it or the individual would do it. I'm not sure. Well, if they're a subcontractor, the individual I would feel would do yeah, it. Yeah, most likely. Yeah, Gil's going to have to discuss that with Lisa. Okay, and the other question I have too is I understand we're setting a a dollar amount on this, but I, I, I'm not sure we might want to check on the criteria to actually meet the requirements of being a subcontractor. I'm not sure we can set hourly wages and set, you know what I mean? Set hourly wages and set date and times. And, you know, if you're a subcontractor, you're kind of, you know, freelance, you're not abiding to. Yeah, I, I, right. But this would give them some type of idea. I mean, it, it's going to be yeah. um, like a per diem type of thing, because if there's no cases, then there's nothing for you to do. But if there's an influx of cases, then they would have more than enough to do. Right. No, I understand. But I think that would be more like a like a weekly kind of thing. Like here's you you know like kind of like a not a salary, but a, you know this is what it pays a week. I, I'm just saying. I just think we should look into um, making sure we meet the requirements of them being a subcontractor if that's what the intention of the town is to hire them as a subcontractor um, and make yeah. sure that they meet the requirements on the pay pot portion of it, um, just so there's no liability on the town that they are in true, um, they are actually a subcontractor and acting as a subcontractor. Um, and we're not just doing that so they don't, you know, come on as an employee if that's not what we're looking to do. And then again, the, the liability policy, I think that's important. Yeah, Gil, we'll have to talk to Lisa about all of that. Okay. Is, I have a question. As a contractor, that would be different, I think, than a subcontractor like in the trade you're just contracting to provide these services which i think is very different in terms of the expectations how, and what's needed would that be any different eileen if if they do something that's incorrect <clears throat> whose liability fall back onto the no town? i'm not talking about the liability i'm talking about the term the terminology subcontractor and contractor i can contract with somebody to provide a service at an hourly rate as needed per diem but I don't, it's not, I'm not a con, a subcontract sort of, I think of a subcontractor as building trade. In a building trade, you would subcontract out. This is a contract that you're going to provide this coverage in these services for us. So I don't think it falls under the same guidelines in terms of pay, but you can ask Lisa about that. Well, a contract would be a set, you know, a set amount or something, not, or we're going to pay you $25 an hour for whatever you work for hours. I don't feel, I mean, I'm just using no. the contract world, but maybe it's right. I don't think so. It is. It is because you, for a contractor, you don't have to spend a certain amount. You can say, these are the services we need. We will pay you $25 an hour or $50 an hour to provide that service. It, it is different. It is different. That's why. So just, you can definitely ask Lisa 
um, but the contract is, is definitely different. Right. For the camp. Uh, yeah, I, it's different my, my the, concern is just that legally that we're, we're doing what we need to do to protect the town. That's, that's what my point is. Yeah, so I added that information to the minutes, so Gil will have to sit down with Lisa and have a discussion about that, because I don't know the answer to that question. Right. And I don't know what kind of liability the person would have. What kind of liability coverage would you be required to, to carry? That's what I, I like. I yeah, that I'm not liability. sure. I, I I don't know. I mean, it's it's a confidential position. You you can't go. And I mean, you know, for a position that could pay as little as 150 a week, I mean, uh, who's going to take out that kind of policy? And I, I, I yeah, I don't know what kind of a policy you would have. I have my own liability insurance because I do <clears throat> private contracting, but um, I don't even know what we cover. Kind of liability would cover a con. Yeah, Lisa would have to look into that. Yeah, yeah. probably we done it in the past. I just don't. I can't think of what what kind of liability insurance you would get. Yeah, right. There is no mission. Yeah, that would have to go to Lisa. Right. No, I, I just I just think we need to definitely get some information on that. My concern is that you know information gets leaked, something happens. Now, who who's liable? Is the town liable because we hired this person and now it defaults to us because they don't have an insurance policy? That's my concern. Where they're oh, acting prone and oh, doing it's, it. It's a valid um, HIPAA would yeah. cover that. Not the town wouldn't be responsible if I make a mistake and I leak information. I am financially responsible um, for making that mistake, and they're a big fine. That would be HIPAA. That would be a HIPAA violation, and that is on the person who released the information without written consent. That absolutely, that's the biggest concern that we would have, and uh, there are laws to protect. Yeah, that's huge. But it's the person who who definitely um, released the information without proper authorization. But that's another question for Lisa. So do we need to vote on this? Yes, yes please. So I need I'll a motion a to go, go ahead, go ahead, Eileen. I was going to say I'll make a motion to accept the this job description for the contact tracer. I don't know if you want me to do both and do the posting or do them separate. Um, no, you can do it all together. Okay, and include the uh, job description posting as well and do i hear a second uh i'll second that motion um pending uh, approval from lisa and yeah i would just say you know uh, prior prior to a selection or hiring someone I, i'd really like to um <laughs> you know just clarification just on it get clarification on the on the legal uh, repercussions of it right but you just don't want it posted until we figure that out. Um, yeah, no. that, I guess. Uh, I, yeah, I guess if we could just, you know, post it and, and include that. If we need to edit that to include that, I'd like that, you know, rather than wasting people's time. Yeah, um, I think we could post it and, you know, just get final determinations before, you know, any hiring process. Right. I would be comfortable with that if we if we get it up just so we can get some uh, some interested parties and right try to get some bites you know just prior, prior to making a selection um, having all that stuff ironed out I guess so I don't know if you want to just you know reword that in your motion Eileen. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to make an addition to that, Teresa, that um, we get information and feedback from Lisa before we hire anyone for this position. I'll second that motion. This is Kevin. And we'll go to roll call. Eileen. Yes. And Kevin. Yes. And I'm a yes also. Uh, we'll move on to septic plans. And the first one up is 53 Washington Street. Mr. Grady? No. If 
everyone has a chance to look at them. I'm here. I keep um, getting disconnected and reconnected. So I'm just letting you know that I'm. Yes, you are. Sounds like she has a really bad connection. <laughs> I have a very bad you know, connection. I'm not, I've, I've done Zooms at my, here in my house all through pandemic for school, and I didn't seem to have any issue. Uh, I'm moving to the back of the yard to see if I can improve my... Did you click my, the link or you called in? I, I clicked the link. I'm using okay. Zoom. All right. If you, get, if, you, if you keep going in and out, I'm going to suggest, and at some point, Dennis might say to you, call in. Because I don't have a problem okay. calling in, but I can't zoom in because of my DSL. Okay. But yeah. Okay. Sorry, Dennis. What's that? No, I just thought it might be better for her to, to call in. If, if it gets to the point where we can't hear her, then you might suggest that she hang up and call in because we'll have a better connection. That was right. Fine. Okay. I'm not going to move since I seem to be able to hear you guys now. <laughs> yeah, you're coming in better now. Yeah, I, I moved away from my house, which seems counterintuitive. I'm in, in the back of the yard now. So I don't know if you guys are ready for me or not, or if you guys need to finish up something. No, we're just. I was just looking at the over at the notes. Um, would you can go ahead with anything you'd like to uh, tell us? Okay. Oh, uh, are so, we, are we 53 Washington Street, Dennis, so we... Yes, I believe so, aren't we? <laughs> okay. All right. Go ahead. Are we, are we good? Yep. All right. So, um, so last year, I um, tried to run a camp. So some of you know and some of you don't know. I tried to run a camp in lieu of... Oh, okay. This is Miss Hickey. I'm sorry. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's a, yep. So um, I try to run the camp because Camp Kiwani didn't have the money to run the camp and they most likely won't have enough money to run the camp effectively this year the way their budget is um and my goal right was to get up to 70 kids for five weeks and to do a variety of recreational activities some of our swimming a lot of it was focused on swimming a lot of it was team building some of it was science you know being in nature and all that sort of stuff. So, um, you know, I started that process with the camp um, and that was grueling to be honest. And then uh, while I did that, I did share my initial documents, my PowerPoint slides and my checklist and things like that um, with the Board of Health. And we, I didn't ask um, the town hall to invite you, you know, so that people would come to the meeting. So that I, like, I was just trying to build it for the town. Um, and so I am clearly hearing that you guys are understaffed and un don't have enough money and all of that sort of stuff after going through this whole process and finally having a meeting at the beginning of June um, and to be given a bunch of documents that would have made my life so much easier two months earlier. Um, and it would have been a successful venue, um, but it wasn't. And so I just wanted to share my experience. I am a public school special educator for almost 30 years. My job is special education law. We do tons of online paperwork. Like that is over half of my job is dealing with, you know, forms and all that kind of stuff. I just want to let you know that that application process was by far one of the most challenging um, ineffective methods that I've ever seen in my almost 30 years of being an educator having to deal with paperwork. Um, the actual system, which I know like you guys are well aware of, is antiquated and cannot hold the documents that it needs to and it doesn't function in the 21st century. So number one, I would like to find out how I can help get an updated system so that you guys can have applications that, that are intuitive and that give automatic responses that we don't have to wait for human response or whatever that was, because I'm telling you that process is driving away business for the town of Hanson. So that's my number one. I would like to figure out how I can help you guys 
get whatever money it is that you guys need to upgrade that system because I updated that my, my profile numerous times and it didn't save any of the information. Um, I have a top of the line Mac. I went to my technology people and they were just like, wow, <laughs> I cannot believe that you're using the system for anything. So I had a lot of resources for that. So that's my number one statement um, that I wanna work with you guys to figure out how we can better move forward for this. Um, and also the communication process was extremely frustrating. And I know that there are only two people in house at the town hall that are doing a lot of work. Uh, and that was very frustrating for somebody who was just trying to do good for the town. Um, in the end on June 2nd, I got a lot of information that if I had had that March 2nd um, or whatever, you know, I mean, the, the Camp Kiwani didn't let me go forward as quick as I had wanted on that as well. But um, I just want to be able to move forward and to bring the Board of Health into the 21st century. Um, what tools do you guys need? What technology do you need? What resources do you need? Because if somebody who has enough experience as I working with paperwork was extremely frustrated, other people did the same thing, walked away and said, let me find a place. Um, so I think I have all of the documents that I need now. And my plan is to move forward in like maybe two months or December, like before Christmas break is to give um, an application to you guys again. Um, I have a few items um, on that application that I was told needed to be done before the Board of Health approved it. But by researching the mass regs, it is like only two items. The language says some items need to be just completed prior to the opening of camp. And what I was verbally told was that these things need to be done before the board health approves. And one of those was training of staff um, in particular. Um, and right now, because I've walked away from my notes, I don't have the second item, uh, but no other town does it that way. And I talked to the um, chief Thompson, he verbally and in written form approved my plan and said, the weekend before we open up camp, We'll go through those finalized items with you, walk you through the whole system so you can get my final approval, which is sort of what I was expecting to hear from the board health. The, the week before you open, let's go through all the things on the, is everybody trained? Do you have all these other things? And that's not what I heard. So that is really all that I really want to say. And I just want to move forward and figure out a way in which we can make the system work better for the community. Oh. All right, I'm done. All right. Um, where did you begin this process on the, what, the, the town? The on the town website, yep. So when you go onto the town website, I had, a, I had actually asked the town administrator at the time, what is the best way for me to do this? And he said, well, go to the town website, you know, do the application. The application on the website does not match the application that I was given on June 2nd. And it's a huge difference. I filled out all those items on the application that is online. Um, and I had more things in a PowerPoint slide that actually prop would have filled out final requirements, but I didn't have them on that because that's not what the checklist said. Um, I'm just one human being. I'm not campfire. I'm not, a, you know, the YMCA. I'm just one human being. I don't have a board of directors. You know, I'm just me with a couple of other people saying, does this look good? Does this look good? What else do you think I need to have in it? So that's where I started um, was on that application on the website. And it was pretty terrible to work with. Teresa, is that something we can have the IT look at or? No, it's a, it's a permitting think, software no. that the town permits. It's the only Excuse permitting me? software that we have. And it's integrated with conservation and building. So the whole system needs to be upgraded though. It is antiquated. It's like very, very old. That, that whole system needs to be upgraded. With you. 
Yes, yeah. right. I and I, I don't with, know how. But it's what yeah. we have. Yeah. And so, right. And how, how do we move forward to get you a better system for all who need to use it? Because that is not user friendly. I, I couldn't upload any of my documents on there. It was like file too big, file too big, file too big. I mean, that's not 21st century. We're now in 2022, almost 22. You know, so that's just not, you know, good. And uh, where do we begin? Where do we move forward with that? Like, what do you guys need? Uh, I don't know if we'd need recommendations from the IT guy. I, I really yeah. don't know, you know, we would start with this. Um, I mean, I don't even mind if I, if I get the name of the IT guy, I can be a hound. I'll tell you that right now. Like, really, it's embarrassing, the level of that. It's but it's not that, the IT person. It's, it's a contract it's that the right. town has with it's, this right. software. Right. right. So hounding anybody right. isn't going to do anything. It's a contract that right. the town has with the software company. So yeah. So you guys need to, to have decide. a different contract. They would that would be up to the town administrator. Contract. Right. The town administrator would so be the, the one, and it's, it's been a problem. So I could write a letter. To, so I can write a yeah. letter to the town administrator and the board of selectmen saying that this system was extraordinarily frustrating blah 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 blah, and that it needs to be updated like again i i know the it guys uh, uh, but they could say the, IT, the only thing oh say that again any contract is that. to the town administrator's office so um okay yeah so I like mean, when the yeah, contract is i mean we don't renewal, purchase our own software right? packages um and right. again, it's not just this office. But that you don't. Rec it. Pardon me. Right, but you don't re make recommendations. You can say we've gotten. You're breaking up. From our, to hear you. our, no. You know. He's asking oh. Teresa if we make recommendations. The you don't. You was, don't. You're oh. not allowed. Yeah. No. no. If the software was bought for three <laughs> different departments to use, so yeah. it has to function across three departments. So the town administrator is the one. Right. And I'm assuming that, yeah. They would have to look at if a new programming was a software needed, upgrade. they would procure it. They would have to. She would have to do that. Right. Probably would seek input from the departments, but they okay. don't get to make Well, I, I, will, I will be writing. My... Yeah. I mean, I, there must be software that is much more effective for you guys to make your jobs just so much more efficient and less frustrating because that is like a very antiquated system. I, I mean, it just, it can't be helpful for any of you, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I, I edited it multiple times and it didn't save any of the stuff. So that's a problem, right? Absolutely. When you go into, like you go in to edit something and update the information and you've saved it and you hit all the buttons and I'm used to looking where are the hidden buttons, where are the hidden buttons. And like the application I still have doesn't, did not, never change from the original information I put into it. Um, and I and try so to update it. so you can let her know that. Yeah. You can make that information available to the town yeah. administrator. Yeah. Uh, that the system is really antiquated. I don't know the cost. Maybe she can have them take a look at the present program. I mean, you know, right. to make alterations to it. I don't know. Dennis, I don't the know. program is very, 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 very old. Yeah, like, I mean, I, I don't know if any of you have gone on and done. I, I actually went on and did like a simple form. That's You have like a one pager and I pretended I was somebody else. That one pager was no problem. But the one for the camps... You know, literally, I edited that five times at least, and none of it saved. Um, so I think the simple forms are, e you know, are not a problem because the data isn't that big. But when you have bigger documents that need more information on them, that's where the problem is. And it's, it was, you know, again, I am a one-to-one -one computer technology school district. I'm used to all kinds of legal paperwork and... Um, I felt like I went back to the 1990s. Because that's, we probably had the system since then. This yeah. <laughs> is a really old system. The town yeah. hall computer network was only upgraded two years ago. Half of the computers right. haven't been upgraded. So, yeah. Um, it's an ongoing issue that everybody's aware of. Aware you can of. Yeah. talk to the town administrator. 
Yeah, I, I don't mind doing that. And the other thing is that Gil had finally given me this checklist that he uses when he, you know, go, does the inspection. And that's the one that needs to be attached to the website saying, please utilize this checklist when you're going through because that initial checklist is really not even close to hitting the mark on everything that needs to be done in order to be um, moving forward. It literally, I, I had a lot of those things when I went back and looked at my PowerPoint and I looked at my notes about, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do this based upon the mass state regs, right? I had a lot of that information somewhere else, um, but it, because it wasn't on the checklist, I, and because I was using town property, and the, a lot of those things were already approved, right? Camp Kiwani is already an approved facility. A lot of those things done, 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 because Camp Kiwani has the bathroom, Camp Kiwani has the water, you know, the running water, Camp Kiwani already has, right, all of these things on the ticket list. So that's the second thing is that, that application that Gil uses to check to make sure you're you know fit in the bill that's the one people need to see so that they can move forward because the one that is on there now is not sufficient for people to do so if anybody else wanted to do a camp and I'm you know I encourage anybody else to do a camp it, it, they would be like the same situation unless they you know again um had had it in with another like YMCA or something like that. I was doing this as a last ditch effort. I was behind the ball to begin with because camp wasn't able to provide the services. And I started this way too late and I knew I started it way too late, but I was hoping that with collaboration and all that other stuff, we were gonna get it done for the kids in, in town. Um, and now I know better that that's not gonna be the, the answer. Uh, and that I will be, you know, starting December will be my first round of here's the application of so far and what do I need to do to move forward. Um, but that that has to be up there on the website. It's not fair to the people who are trying to get things up and running and it's not fair to the community. We desperately need recreational programs for our, our community. And I'm here to support that. And we may not be able to modify the system that's in there now. The program so that again is something you have to talk to lisa about right. about getting a more updated program but we probably won't be able to modify the software i can tell you that you won't be able to modify the actual system but the only thing you could do is have a link for that application so that people have that application checklist instead of the one that is on the application itself because the one that's on the application itself is not sufficient for a more complicated camp if you have multiple staffs near the water blah 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 it, it, it is a complicated staff I fully understand that there's other ones where there's two staff members who are you know with 12 kids not the same kind of application right this one was a highly intensive application and it needed that big checklist that Gil gave me on June 2nd and that needs to be accessible to people so that they can know what they're getting into and have everything done when they you know, turn it in and say, okay, I've done this, I've done this, this one doesn't apply to me, this one does. I mean, now that I look at that application after the fact, I had probably 95% of the stuff done, um, but it wasn't on that ori original checklist. Um, and I only had about 5% more to do, but at that point in time, I was so frustrated with Camp Kiwani at the time. <laughs> and then thinking that I, the Board of Health, I was like, oh, I did everything on the checklist mentally, right? I mentally was thinking I did everything. I should be good. Um, but, but again, because I was using a wrong checklist to do my fact checking. And that's the only thing I'm requesting for you guys. That doesn't have to be part of the, like, obviously you can't change the application probably, but, or the system, but you can add that as a link to say, here's the Board of Health check link, checklist for camp, day camps. And I think that would make mm -hmm. life much easier. And so I'm going to just, I'll put this all in writing and I will send it to Lisa Green and the Board of Selectmen to say, like, we just need, we need to do better for our community. And okay. you guys obviously do not have, right, 
the ability to yeah operate we that. we don't yeah i yeah, you know the it okay. and uh lisa and the administrative okay. people okay. have more say in it than we do so all right perfect that's all i need from but you guys. i appreciate your input yeah. thank you very much yes, yeah thanks. i just want the, the town to move forward right it's like right this. absolutely right okay you thank you Ms. Diggy. thank you you too all right yep bye-bye bye. dennis i have a question on yes. 53 west washington street i see the permit i don't see the review but I see reference to the review. Came it's, back from our. It's like fifty-four pages. The the review is in there, Mr. Dunneman's review. Is it? Yeah. yeah. There's like oh, fifty-four so pages. Keep going. Oh Jesus! All right. Yeah. It wasn't coming up. Jesus, creepers. Yeah, there's a whole bunch of uh, pages on I that. Maybe I was going too fast and it wasn't loading it. Now I. Mm. All right. Okay, that was it. I'll find Did you see it. it? Not yet, but I'm scrolling down through. Okay. Scrolling. The, there was two. There was two comments, um, Eileen. One was to add a note to the plan. Site does not line within a zone two. Zone one is zone two, um, and uh, design calculations. Um, the, the chambers. It looks like where the rows were seventy five inches long, not seventy six. It was just two minor edits. A lot of this is. Um, I believe in approval, mass mass state approval, um, yep. and an application. So uh, that's what why the attachment was so long. It's page thirteen oh, now. Okay. Is the notes page thirteen? Wow! Oh, I'm on page twelve of seventy four. Did not see that before. Okay, now I see it. Thank you. Okay. What they're requesting is just a civ use of a civ analysis. Um, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the plan for fifty three West Washington Street. I'll second. And we'll go to roll call, Aline. Yes. Kevin? Yes. I'm a yes also. Uh, next up is, what is it, 20? I got to go back. It's uh, 20 Woodman yeah. Terrace. There you go, 20 Woodman Terrace, uh, Crowell Engineering. Is there anyone here from Crowell? Look over plans. I'll be you on the phone. No, I guess he didn't want to call in. Uh, let's see what they got in. Sure, awesome. This was two variants requests. So it looks like Dennis, it was, um, so what they have is they have two, they have two pipes coming out of the house, um, and they they're gonna install a second tank. They're both gonna feed the same leaching field, but as you look at the house, there's one shown coming out of the back right corner, um, and it looks like it probably comes out of a slab because it says garage there. Um, so that's right. coming into a, a separate tank, and they asked for a variance to make that one tank a thousand gallon tank as opposed to 15. And then the tank in the front of the house is a regular standard 15 um, hundred gallon tank. And so that was one of the variance requests that was to use a thousand gallon instead of 1500 gallon on that second tank. Mm -hmm. And then the other variance request, it says to reduce to 10 foot minimum setback from the garage slab to the septic tank um, to reduce from 10 feet to the to 5.4 feet. and that variance request is not um, to an abutter or anyone that's to this this property itself. They're asking to move that septic tank closer to their own dwelling. Um, that's all I see on this for variance requests. Right. It would be pending approval by conservation as well. Yeah, that, that was gonna be one of my questions too because I did see the pond there. I'm assuming they're gonna have to file. Yeah. Okay. Anyone, I don't, yeah, other I don't, issues with it? I don't have any questions, Dennis. No, I'll make a motion that we accept the um, application for 20 Woodman Terrace. Pending conservation approval. Pending conservation approval. I'll second that motion. 
And we'll go to roll call, Arlene. Yeah. Kevin. Yes. And I'm a yes also. Um, next up is 1036 Main Street. Contagious. Uh. Then the Ten thirty six. That was done by Flaherty Stefani, right? Is that that one? Yeah. Yeah. This one looks familiar, um, Teresa. Was, was this in front of us before, or did we discuss it, or did I just see the plan on it before? Um, it may have been. Hang on a second. For some reason this looks familiar. Maybe it's something very similar we saw not long ago. No, I don't think so. Oh, maybe. Hold on. I feel like I feel like we already approved this or something. It's not signed off previously, so um, you know what? Is this the one? This may be the one that they couldn't. They didn't have the. Um, hang up. Bear with me one second. Yeah. You know, it makes me wonder too because I feel like Kevin Flaherty would be here too. He usually calls in. Um, well, given the information, hmm. I sent everything over on Thursday. Right. No, I just mean usually he calls in, but um, yeah, this, I don't know. Maybe no, we already... it wasn't. Um, it was submitted on June eighth. I don't know why it's been kicking around for so long. For some reason it took them a while to resubmit revised plans. Is this a presby? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. It is? So this may have been the plan they originally, um, it wasn't a presby system, but I guess like everybody else, they're having a hard time getting components. Um, so they switched to a presby system. I don't know if this is that, that plan though. Okay, so that, that I just looked back. So this was on our agenda for August. No. Yeah, so this is the plan then. They switched it to a Presby system because they couldn't get the chambers. August 3rd. August 3rd, yeah. 2020. This was on our agenda. Okay. Now, I, for some reason, it looked very familiar. Yeah, originally they had... Yeah, they had designed this with, I believe, high-capacity infiltrators. Yeah, and they can't... Everybody is having a hard time um, getting materials, I guess. So that's why they switched it over to a Presby so they can get it installed. See, I'm not going crazy. I thought I saw this one before. <laughs> you have a good memory. Yeah, the engineer notes it, that he, there was a design change and he had no yeah. further comments other than they know. I see Hard that. To keep them straight. <clears throat> so if nobody has any further discussion, I will um, make a motion that we accept plan for 1036 Main Street. Um, 
I'll Mr. Second. Donovan just re he just wants some notes uh, put on the plans. Who? Oh. Mr. Donovan? No, just one note. No, it was just one note. And it probably was added. It just said add a note to the plan for type something supplier, which I'm sure they just sent these in recently. So I'm sure it was changed. Um, yeah, he just had one thing he wanted noted. But he just got oh. these plans October. Let me see. Plan is resubmitted on October 7th. Yeah, okay, on one it says add a note to the plan for the type and the supplier for the concrete leaching chambers. And then on the next page, it says add a note to the plan. Site does not fall within DEP approved zone one or zone two act for the protection district. So two separate notes. Oh, I see the second note. Yep, I see it now. Okay. Yep. So approval uh, pending the addition of the notation. They, they got that on there on the bottom left of the site. Um, it, it The site does fall within a DEP approved zone to aquifer protection district. That note is on the bottom left, right above the engineer stamp. Okay, uh, all good. So it looks like, let me see here. It says supplier for the concrete leaching chambers. Yeah, the that, other note you wanted. I was looking at the wrong. Um, the first plan we had, I think, it was fifty three West Washington. That was the Presby. This one is concrete um, chambers. So I guess he. I'm trying to see if there's a note here. So, yeah, I guess just to be safe, I don't see it, but. Just to be safe, if um, I, do you want me to make the motion, or do you want to make it, Eileen? Or no, you go ahead. You because I'm sure you want to add something to it. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to approve the plan for 1036 Main Street, um, just pending submittal of uh, specifications on the concrete chambers. I'll second. And we'll go to roll call, Eileen. Yes. Kevin. Yes. And I'm a yes also. Um, uh, geez, hold on. There we go. Um, we have no gill, right? Well, we I, have I uh, the transfer station budget. Gill uh, on. No, I guess he's not. Old and unfinished business, the transfer station budget. Yeah. Um, um, I believe we had discussions about eliminating the sticker. And um, we had heard from Kevin and FinCom. And, um, yes, I, I spoke ahead, to Jason. Kevin from FinCom. Um, and he said we'd need to so it's roughly twenty four thousand dollars a year the stickers bring in because it's less than eighty thousand for the three over the three years right. um and he doesn't want to eliminate a funding source so we would have to find a way to um have a funding source if we do away with the stickers so i don't know that how to my do concern right. why why couldn't we do like a five-year sticker? Um, increase the cost because I I don't know if you had a chance, but I looked at surrounding towns and sort of what it costs to use their transfer stations. But a lot yeah. of the surrounding towns are curbside. Um, let me think. Let me I see. sent you guys uh, an email um, earlier today what, with the costs for um, trip ticket items. Yes, that's eleven thousand so far this year. Right, but it it was also the list from Halifax, Pembroke, and Rockland. Yes. Oh, I didn't I, see that list. Yep. So the only the only town close that um, maybe two towns Kingston people have it's two hundred dollars a year for residential unless you're a senior and then it's ninety. Um, and seniors are 65, you're 60 to 65. It's $100 a 
and you pay for bags. Um, so I think it's, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I was just going to say most of these towns had, they were very expensive. Um, I think one at Carver, you pay $140 a year and you have to use a bag. Um, yeah, to go to the transfer station. So the stickers, in terms of the stickers, everybody charges a lot more than we do. But I thought if we extended the time out five people, years. People don't care how, people don't care what's going on in Halifax or Kingston or Carver. They don't want to pay. They just don't. Oh. They come in here and they yell and scream and not I everybody, know. but a, a lot know. of them do. Um, so the, thank, do these other towns, you have to pay that initial fee? and buy your yeah. bags and that initial yeah. fee doesn't get you a sticker that's what you pay for the sticker that's oh they still year. do utilize so, a sticker well, a sticker and it's per year and we charge people ten dollars a year so even if we didn't raise the price of the sticker and extended it out for five years and made it fifty dollars people still have to pay for their bags um would it even be possible to take some of those proceeds and use that to hire a person to do the sticker? Last time I volunteered on Tuesdays and on Friday and went in and did stickers. Um, I think if we extended that a longer period of time, even if we didn't increase the amount, they're still not going to be able to go anyplace else for $10 a year. And we still would not lose that stream of income. Or you could increase the fees for the things that you purchase trip tickets for and add fees for things that we don't currently charge for, like propane tanks, for example. To make up the cost. We can't control who uses it, though. You're still Pardon not me? able to control. You're still not able to control who uses it. Anybody right, but if they're in. buying bags, what difference does it make? It could be a huge increase. In what? The amount of in people the, using it? it? Yes. Yeah. If I can pay five bucks and go to Hanson, why wouldn't I do that? I live in the next town over and they're going to charge me $100 a year for a sticker and make me buy bags. I don't have to do that in Hanson. Just buy a bag. We got to increase the fees. We definitely have to. If you... I think increasing please, please the, every, everyone and, look at those the free structures for the surrounding towns and you know compare them to ours. Yeah. And we definitely, definitely have to raise our fees. I, I have I didn't look at the fees, I just looked at the cost of the stickers. Yeah, I the fees and what we charge for. There's way more things that can be um you could get a trip ticket for that now you're dropping off for free. Like right. If you look at Rockland, Rockland has a big list of things that we take a lot of it for free. We need to start yeah, we, charging. We'll make up the money for that we're missing. What What do we take for free? Propane tanks. Propane tanks <laughs> for one. Okay, that's one. I mean, you can get five bucks any outfit taking that. And I, what's it cost us to get rid of them? Um. We, I'd have to look at an invoice. Um, we get a small check. That company has been sold, I swear to God, five times. Oh, I know. And a lot of people say that they can't even get them to pick up. I think they're out of Connecticut now. A lot yeah, of other towns have problems. But like um, bicycles, we don't charge for bicycles. They charge $5. Why do the into the metal? Right, but we could charge for it. How are you going to keep track of who's paid for what? If not everything that goes into that metal container is um, charged, are we going to start charging to put the people to put stuff in there? But don't we get money from the guy that not that much, away? not that much. So are we we're not paying for him to take it though, are we? Um, no. So it's not costing us anything. It costs us manpower to organize the stupid thing. I mean, I believe we can get a nominal fee for all these things that we're taking for free now. It's not a lot, though. 
metal is free, batteries are free, light bulbs are free. But it doesn't have to be free. I know. It doesn't have to be. <laughs> That's my point. <laughs> I'd rather pay an increased cost for a sticker than nickel and diamond me every time I went to the transfer station for every single item. But it's not every single item. It's every Kevin, other town. Any- it's nothing that every other town hasn't been doing for years. Uh, like what? What do you mean? What do you mean? Every other town hasn't been. Doing do, look years? at the list that she gave. I'm you. looking. Just, I'm looking at the list right now. I'm looking at. The yeah. List. Well, it, compare them to us, and you know, there's a substantial difference. Yeah, I would have to pull ours out because a lot of this stuff we don't take. We don't take dryers. Um, yes, we do. We do. Yes, like a like a clothes dryer. Yeah. Yeah, we'd go bin. in the metal bin. <laughs> Throw in the bin. You're kidding. No. All right. You see what we're saying? <laughs> yeah, no, but I, I still don't see that we're going to get a huge uptake. What kinds of things are you planning on charging for? The propane tank. What are you going to charge? Five bucks? Well, that, that um, Rockland has five and ten. Hold on. I got to scroll. Hold on. What kind of they take construction demo. We don't take that. Right, but it. I'm looking for the propane tanks is five dollars, and I don't know what the ten is. Ten dollars. Yep. Oh, a large, a large one. A small one is five, and a large one is ten. Uh, and Halifax charges a dollar or fifteen dollars, depending on what it is. I mean, different towns charge different things. Right. Kevin, do you have any thoughts? I think we need to get on par with what other towns are doing. I think it's going to one, you know, reduce the abuse of our of people using our services, and two, we got to stop bringing some more money in. You know, I mean, yeah, the cost right. of milk that's and gas right. goes up. I mean, we we got to raise the costs, right. and that's it. I mean, we're providing a service, and like Teresa said, it's it's uh, you know, the 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 labor that goes into it that that cost something and just because you know we're getting yeah. rid of it for free some of the metal it's still uh, yeah it doesn't offset our, our cost to coordinate, uh, put employees at is it just me or is Kevin? Right oh, now? no. Sounds like he's on freaking hallucinogenics. Kevin. Oh, did he drop? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm Hello? still here. Yep. Oh, there you are. Um, Hanover charges between a dollar and $20 for propane tanks. Kevin, we couldn't understand any of what you said. <laughs> We're breaking up. Can you hear me now? No. (laughs) (laughs) That's amusing. It's the little thing. I don't know if he was moving, but he was definitely significantly slowed down to 33 and a third. But anyhow, I I think we have to at least take a look at it. And, we, need to, uh, we need to take a look at all the things that we do, what the costs are, what the costs are to us, um, and how are we going to replace $20,000? Right. We do need to look at that. Um, so... I mean, I, I know, know. Just, just for instance, the TV's uh, you know, we could get much more. Did, uh, price for the TVs are much lower than the surrounding towns. I I don't. Know Dennis, can you hear me now? That's better, Kevin. Yeah. All right. No, what I was saying. Before... <laughs> All right, go on. Why? <laughs> no, we can't, Kevin. Kevin, forget it. You know, nope. we still have to pay, you know, the employees there, the manpower that goes up. 
I get you. Kevin, we're only half hearing. Can you, I don't know if you want to call in. I don't know. But we're not hearing what you're saying. But I heard you say manpower. You want to make sure that what we're charging costs covers the cost of that. But that was the only thing we heard. Right. That, and I, I think we need to get on par with what the other towns are charging. Um, I think right. it's going to yeah. help. It's going to help reduce the abuse of our, you know, of our dump with people from other towns coming here because it's cheaper, like we discussed before. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it's the, the cost of a gallon of milk and a gallon of gas just keeps going up. I mean, we have to, we have to raise our prices. We're not here to, to, to gaff the, the residents, but we need to sustain our, our service. You know, we, we need to, we need to make money to put back into the system. Right. Right. So I guess we're going to have to do some work between now and the next meeting and really come up with lists to sort of what, to see what, what we can do and what we're not charging for that we can charge for. That's all. Um, it, yeah. We'll see if we can put together, you know, just some kind of um, composite list, just a, you know, see, see how it looks and see how the figures yeah. work out. You know what I'm saying? trying to figure out Dennis why you thought we weren't charging enough for TVs because even when we do the local electronic things here uh, the price is comparable to what they charge to, to as to what we charge we I don't think we're far off. when I was up at the office today Eileen and we were looking at the lists um I think does the medium size like 19 to 36 inch we were charging like what 15 to 20 dollars Teresa and Rockland, and Rockland was getting Rockland was getting what 40 or 50? Um they're getting 30 to 40. It's 20, 30, 30 and 40. So I mean, yeah. So we need to look at whether or not what it's costing us to get to get rid of it. And are we are we yeah. um, if we're shot in ourselves or enough. you know oh yeah. Yes, I think it's Hanover charges per pound. I know we don't have a scale, so we can't do that. But yeah, yeah small it, TVs it, are 20. Yeah, um, Abington small charges TV? 25, 35, or $40, depending on the size of the TV. Yep. What do we charge for our largest TV? 35 is the highest amount. Okay, so that's like five bucks off of what everybody else is. So we can look at tweaking that stuff. And then the um, propane. Again, we'll just, we'll take a look at it and see what needs to be addressed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Gil's still not with us. Is he on and the road? We, yeah, yes, he's out. Um, he's way out there. <laughs> In the middle of the state where nobody else goes. Um, yeah. Any other older unfinished business or any uh, other subjects anyone would like to discuss? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn, I guess. Okay, I will make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that motion. We'll go to roll call, Ali. Yeah. Kevin. Yes. And I'm a yes also. Thank you very much. Right, thanks, Have a good guys. evening. All right, bye. Bye. Bye-bye now.